The dual LFO and VCI is a Eurac format 10 HP wide module. It's available in black or a silver front panel. It has two independent LFOs with variable wave shapes, a status LED for each LFO, and includes a DC coupled VCA to allow voltage control of modulation level. LFO1 includes an extra low range for very slow modulation speeds, and it includes a sync or reset input. This is the dual LFO module, and it's a skiff friendly design, it's very shallow. At the bottom, this is the power connector and the bottom two rails for the minus 12 volt connection. And if you look on the bottom of your cable, you've got a red stripe and that's supposed to line up with this pin at the bottom. And the same on the power connector on the bus board as well. Like this one's marked with minus 12 volts, so you can see where it's supposed to go. And Both of the LFOs have a rate control and the range is between 0.15 Hz to 1 kHz. That's about 6.5 seconds to 1 millisecond. And just on the, the triangle wave as it is at the moment, if you see on the scope, that's its slowest speed without the slow setting engaged. And that's his top speed. So that's just at a regular speed, but with the slow switch engaged, the speed drops down to a range of 0.01 Hz up to 2 Hz, which is approximately 100 seconds up to half a second. It's about halfway, and it's top speed. And it's absolute slowest speed. Obviously I won't sit here and wait for that to finish, but 100 seconds, that is a very slow LFO. The triangle output, or the sawtooth, or the ramp, depending on, on how you've got it set, has a 10 volt peak to peak signal. And this is how the shape control will pass through the triangle to either a ramp or a sawtooth. By using the same control, the square wave output has variable pulse width. And the same principle as before, it will move from an even square. LFO1 has a sync input, which allows you to reset the waveform using a pulse wave from an external module or even just a pulse wave from LFO2. So I'm going to demonstrate this using the pulse output of LFO2. And if you look on the scope, I've got a triangle wave going into it at the moment. And you see it looks just like you'd expect a triangle wave to look. But then when I insert the pulse wave from LFO2, which is running at a slower speed, into the sync input of LFO1,
now on every second cycle of LFO1 the wave shape is being reset by LFO2 and that gives you that sound you can hear where it's alternating between the complete voltage range of the LFO and on the second pulse stopping prematurely that gives you an interesting variation in wave shapes for modulation but I can also demonstrate this by changing the shape of the waveform first to a sawtooth and then to a ramp the same is also true with the square wave so that's just a, a normal square wave and then if I insert the sync but then also I can morph the shape of the of the pulse wave and in the other direction This is just modulating a filter at the moment with VCO passing through it, but if you can imagine that will be very useful for rhythmic patterns and even percussive sounds. The module's built-in VCA is normal to the triangle output of LFO2 but it does have a, an input here where you can use it to amplify other control voltage signals. The VCA is a linear response which means it's more suited to control voltages. It will also work with audio but it has a reduced frequency response so some of the top end of the audio will be lost but that might be useful for some things. It can be controlled by a 0 to plus 5 volt unipolar CV. That makes it more suited to something like an envelope generator which is also unipolar in that the signal it will send will always start at zero volts and then rise to a, a CV value above zero, so to say plus five or plus ten. Whereas an LFO is bipolar, so the voltage range would be between plus five volts and minus five volts. To illustrate this, I'm using LFO1 to control the VCA, and that's controlling the level of LFO2 coming out of the module. If you look at the oscilloscope image, the flat line that's appearing between the, the modulation is where the voltage coming from LFO1 drops below zero. Therefore, it's no use to the VCA, so it, it doesn't do anything. It does nothing. And then where you see the modulation occurring is the point where the signal coming from LFO1 passes above zero volts to plus five. I'll demonstrate this with a, an envelope generator now. I've got a gate signal from a keyboard triggering the, the envelope and I've got a slow attack speed and just a bit of release. And so now you should see the signal from the LFO gradually come in as I trigger a key. And I've got sustain all the way up so it will, it will continue to do that whilst I've got the key held down. And then when I let go, you get the release portion of the envelope and the modulation will fade out. This would be especially useful for those kinds of lead sounds where you want to introduce a bit of vibrato gradually to the signal. So either using an envelope generator to control the VCA each time a new gate signal is received. Or alternatively, you could use something like a mod controller on a keyboard to control the amount of LFO directly. I've connected the CV output for the mod controller straight to the CV input of the VCA on the LFO and I've also set up the keyboards to play notes so that's just it controlling the, the pitch of the VCO and then I can add using the mod controller some of that filter modulation from the LFO
You can also use the modules VCA with other CV signals. In this case I've got the sample and hold plugged into the input of the VCA and that cancels out the triangle wave that it's normal to. So in this scenario, just like before I'm using the mod controller to control the amount of modulation but in this case it's controlling the amount of sample and hold that's being passed through the VCA and then onto the frequency of the Sonic XV filter and I've got this set up with a really croaky sound using its wave folder just to make something that's got a bit more a bit more of an evident sound to it so this is the sound without and then as I add Thank <laughs> you. 